Do you know my mum? Tracy Beaker. I'm Tracy Beaker and I can tell you anything you need to know about surviving in this place. So after celebrate 20 years of the Tracy Beaker franchise, I'll be going through all four shows within the franchise that began with the story Tracy Beaker that aired on January of 2002 to now, with the dumping ground being the current show in the franchise and the longest running show that still airs on CBBC. End of the year, right? No. Star of a better one. Sorry, Tracy Vika aired from 2002 to 2005 and actually still holds up 10 years later. The show originally began as a form of book to TV adaption in its first season with the tone very much contrasting anything we see later on. As the first season very much stays true to the book, the show does as it goes on starts to become more of its own identity with it being to this day regarded as one of CBBC's most popular shows with the love and support for the show still residing within the other spin-offs after. Throughout the run the show was filmed on various locations for its care homes with the first series being filmed on location at the Hamhurst Lodge in Ealing which doubled as this care home story house through the building. Though the building which were a former children's home was sold by Ely Council shortly after the series was aired which forced production to move to Cardiff for series 2. The building used across the second and third series plus the movie was The Hollies, a former nurse's home on Station Road in Lahitian. Production moved again and the fourth series was filmed at Scoffmere House on the Marie Parade in Penarth. Although this change in location was actually addressed this time at the beginning of the fourth series with the care home being named now as Cliffside. The fifth and final series saw another change in production location the M2 House School in Landaff doubling as the final care home we see in the show. Although we do see the original name of the building being retained for the new care home in Tracy Beaker Returns and the first series of the dumping ground. Tracy Beaker joining the show is an interesting character as whilst being the obvious protagonist and a great moral model for younger girls, Tracy does have flaws which are perfectly justified. Her lashing out at others in the home is never actually really instigated by herself and whilst it does seem like that at times, the residents do pick on her. It's all down to her very much taking a off as a leader of the home with her being there the longest it would definitely clash with her residents her tendency to lie about her mum especially in the first three series and how they were both in very good stability before she was taken to the dumping ground i love how it parallels in the first series with some bleak scenes during the stories just presenting the opposite the fact that also the residents in the home by the younger ones know that tracy's lying and yet tracy carries them on perhaps it helps her in a way feel a sense of security and maybe a blockage from the horrible mistreatment she had endured from her mum. But we also see whenever there were certain situations the other residents were in, Tracy would always use the talks of awe about her mum in some leverage to help out in that situation which presents Tracy's love for her mum despite the neglect she received from her. Although this comes to a halt in the movie and whilst I don't necessarily like that what was Tracy's fantasy and what should have been Tracy's mechanism with what was a traumatic experience for her at a younger age actually being a reality it is during the film we see this new change in the character of Tracy as after the film which despite the awkward placement in between the third series we do see less of Tracy lashing out or being as emotional from the rough reality of her mum's neglect it's an absolute must that I bring up the character of Cam Lawson into this as the beauty of their relationship is how Tracy instantly took a liking to her with it also being the reason why Tracy got a passion into wishing to become an author. Tracy sees throughout the first season that Cam isn't exactly the most successful author hence her living conditions and car but seeing how much enthusiasm Cam has for her occupation is probably what also inspires Tracy. We see throughout the run that there has been some rough patches with their relationship which are quite interesting like when Tracy stole Cam's favourite mug after being sent back to the dumping ground when Cam's slack gets burnt down thanks to Tracy accidentally leaving some kitchen cloth to set a light. As is explained that whilst the intent looked malicious it actually is shown by Jenny that 
Perhaps she started to remember something of Cam, probably as she's feeling that she's blown the chance of having another successful foster home. With other arguments throughout the series being that they set boundaries for each other. The one that definitely strikes a chord is when Cam marries Gary, a man that Cam met whilst she and Tracy were travelling during the first half of the fifth series. Gary is someone that Tracy takes an instant dislike into, thinking that when they eventually want to have children, that will leave Tracy out the picture. I would have loved them to go down a deeper route, with that being it had been noted in the original book that there were an indication of some physical and verbal abuse that Tracy endured from her mum's boyfriend, who she nicknamed Gorilla Boyfriend, and perhaps this could have definitely dampened her opinion on boys and men, and which is why Tracy had always been a woman of her own, and also why she fought back against the boys in their care home. In conclusion though, Tracy is a strong protagonist, and a leader that can definitely recognise her flaws and work from him. Danny Hammer obviously had to be mentioned mentioned here also with how strong her acting is at such a young age and definitely one of the reasons why the character worked so well. Mike Milligan in the first series presents an enormous amount of care for all the kids. During the flashback night when Mike takes the blame after Tracy smashes the window with a football, Mike is shown to be quite close with her, especially when Tracy brings up in the first episode of the prospect of her being fostered by Mike, just presenting this almost father slash daughter bond that they have together which flourishes when she's left angered and hurt as Mike announces he's leaving to go to a desperately short staffed children's home as a head care worker. Although he does return in the final fifth season to seemingly take over Duke's cook position, it becomes more and more apparent that Duke isn't coming back, although he later is given the position of head care worker, a position that he'd go to work for years to come. Mike's character is quite interesting, as we do find he can relate to the kids in some form, whether it's his down to earth personality or that he's strict but fair. But his character does take a backseat until later on. Justin Littlewood is definitely the most privileged in the care home, being the one that actually still sees her dad regularly throughout the first three seasons before eventually moving back in with him alongside his new girlfriend Carrie. She can become quite entitled, shown primarily in a long feud with Tracy, which started all the way in the first episode because she was jealous that Louise and her were previously best friends. Jealousy seems to be a recurring theme of the character of Justin, especially when it comes to finding that she would no longer be the single child when Carrie became pregnant and also when she actually moved back to the dumping ground in the final fifth season due to the spotlight changing again when her cousin came to stay which made her jealous after the limelight was stolen from her to him and refused to consider Billy and his situation until later on after she helps him come through a near-death experience. Justine does become the main protagonist until Tracy returns at the end of episode 4 in series 5 and it's interesting as we move later on in the franchise when we see the character of Justine again and how essentially she becomes the most successful to have left the home though none of that seems to have been making her happy. Liam Daniels, nicknamed Crash, is an extremely interesting character with the character itself actually being quite dangerous with his prone aggressive behaviour being shown to be quite a challenge when he debuted in series 3. His aggression is explained when before living in care his dad used to essentially treat him like a punching bag and yell and hit him. All this anger eventually rubbed off on him. Crash is shown to be quite cynical in his first season and always had been the first to call out a flaw in the care system or whatever the situation the care kids have them themselves in, although as the character progresses he's shown to be quite friendly amongst his peers and it's also shown that Crash is actually quite artistic and has a great talent for painting with it being one of the things that actually helps him calm him down and help his anger. Crash's character other than the main titular character is the only character we kind of get consistent development throughout with his character being beautifully wrapped up in the final season as he finally meets up with his dad again which was honestly quite a strong episode as well. In conclusion, the whole story of Tracy Beaker is incredibly fun and will always have a place in my heart purely because of the nostalgia it carries. It's harder to pick out and analyse his characters because they were never as complex and thoroughly panned out as the later show. Five years later, where it was commissioned in March of 2009, that a form of continuation would be airing in 2010. Though it'd be a new cast of kids, as Danny Harmer reprises her role as a grown up Trace speaker who returns to the dumping ground and now works for Mike, reprised by Connor Bryan as a care worker with the entirety of the series 
being filmed in the old Las Lascaris school in Jesmond, Newcastle upon Tyne. Whilst the series definitely has, still has its fun moments, it is massively dramatised when it comes to tone as the characters are hugely complex and of course brilliantly acted out. I could talk about all these characters but the video would be longer than intended so I'll be picking on a select few out that I feel like I want to talk about. And I want to start first with the character of Tracy. The character of Tracy is great in this maturing continuation and where do I begin? The show essentially shows her evolve into a, an independent woman. I love that her job as a care worker isn't exactly a walk in the park as she initially says it is. As it is shown, especially in the first two episodes, when Tracy forgets the main role of being a care worker, and that's to put the care kids first, as she gives them false promises, as she's too preoccupied with a discovery of a letter from her mum that Mike didn't let her see years ago. Though she later learns to let the past die and ends up burning the letter, and again, I like this as it signifies the end of an era with a certain part of the character of Tracy and the closure of Tracy's mum, something that was referenced a lot in the original series series and also signifies how we're moving on to a new generation of DG kids. Going back to what I said before about evolving into an adult, Trace is still quite reliant on Cam and we see this in the final episode of the second season as she suffers a panic attack after feeling scared of being alone when Cam moves back to New York. Tracy has a love interest in the series also that being Toby's social worker Seth who has aspirations with his band. Although the character is never seen after the series nor heard of, it is believed that the two had a child after Tracy Lee's had done begun for a writing cast, that being Jess Beaker. Johnny Light Crash was definitely prone to his aggressive behaviour, although the intent was to always look out for his younger sister T. I do personally think that Johnny in the first series was quite misogynistic towards T and the other girls in the home, especially to T, feeling the need to stop her from being her own person because growing up previously with their abusive stepdad Keith and their mum never really stepping in seeing as she was scared too, so Johnny had to kind of protect them both. I like how the character of Electra arrives and she quite frequently clashes with Johnny, being that she's a strong independent girl that he couldn't control and dictate and that kind of helped him let T be her own person as we find later in the series we don't nearly see Johnny be as protective and controlling of it as he was in the first. Don't get me wrong the character of Johnny isn't entirely as horrible as a character as I've made him out to be. He deeply cares for his little sister and I must add that his exit in succeeding spin-off is one of the best in the franchise as he faces his stepdad that being his inner demon and was one of the main roots for his offer protection over T and it was kind of sad when he initially thought of dropping his enrolment in the army to stay in protect he and his mum. The episode itself is a great watch if you haven't seen it and I highly recommend that. Mandy Perkins, nickname Electric, is one of the best things about this series. How she came to care is extremely interesting, being a girl of a rebellious streak and always the opposite of what a family dynamic were like. Her defiance would often mean though her older system would be casted aside, like when her parents missed a prom night to go bail Electric out. Melissa had always been the perfect child because she dare stand up to her parents, which always made her quite the pushover. It was actually kind of heartbreaking when Melissa was rightfully angry at Electric for cancelling her own wedding, something Melissa had found happiness in. Going back to her debut, it kicks off a character from the get-go as she kind of felt like she had to pick that fight with Liam, seeing as he was the leader of the home, completely underestimating how different the environment was to the rough background she was in in a previous home. She's shown during the first series to eventually show her warmth in the home and towards the residents, like when not necessarily saying it, but we find that she did the most on a memorial bench that the residents did for Frank's granddad who died and they did because Frank wasn't able to attend the funeral. In the final episode of season 2 Chain Reaction we see Electra feeling quite hurt when being asked to give back a friendship bracelet given to by Electra perhaps seeing this as jealousy but also seeing this as a genuine friendship that Electra had had with Carmen. Electra's unexpected departure after the first season of the dumping ground upset me because there was so much to explore with the character especially with her own sexuality um, whilst I'm glad it was confirmed later in the web series and her later stints in the dumping ground uh, we could have seen a great story and a great episode. Toby Coleman is just a perfect character with such a tragic background who believed for the longest time that he was responsible in some way for the death of his parents that tragically died in a car accident when they both went out to cool down after a heated argument that happened between the two and Toby. Since then he was convinced that he was played with bad luck. The two Toby centric stories in series one that being bad luck boy and good luck boy are brilliant with the first being around Tracy after insensitivity and 
everything to look at Toby's background before making a story about him and his bad luck for her writing column. She eventually helps him come to terms with that what happened with his parents wasn't his fault and also shows him that whatever life may throw at you it isn't bad luck it's just life and i found that to be so powerful coming from tracy good luck boy is a fun story that quickly unravels with toby thinking that he'd finally found some luck when he wins a free holiday to florida although he later finds that he has to fake having a family in order to win it in conclusion though the show is a perfect and brilliant continuation of the franchise with the tone itself showing more heart and drama alongside the classic comedy and fun bits the new kids and their backgrounds were brilliantly written and complex and again I could sit and talk through them all as they were all individually great. So after Danny Harmer bowed out, after 10 years of playing Tracy Beaker, it was confirmed that the format would continue on into a new spin-off called The Dumping Ground and would essentially pick up where we left off at the end of the Tracy Beaker Returns. The show was filmed at the same location as the previous show until its second season where onwards it was moved to the former Laws Dean Fire Station in Morph Peff, Northumberland. The show is currently the longest running in the franchise and also one of the longest running shows still airing on CBBC. Mike at this point was the oldest character and it was a shame that he essentially had nothing to do in terms of his own character although he assisted well with others and I mean I found T and Cartman's exit so heartbreaking purely down to Mike's reaction as the character had withstanded almost three generations of DG kids and whilst I have problems with the current show, problems I can just air out another time, Mike was a good constant with the show and it was a shame that he had been written out by the writers in favour and a younger care worker and while Scott is an alright replacement it's obviously no Mike I do appreciate the writers writing an exit for him and something for Mike to do in his final seasons like him reuniting with his girlfriend Fiona and later marrying her with Danny Harmer actually reprising her role as Tracy for that wedding episode alongside some other DG characters which is another thing I can appreciate the current show for and the previous and it's fan service and the continuity from time to time the episode reunion is the penultimate story before the two part finale and it's such a great Great story with it merely being just the main air plot we discover some new law that kind of retcons mike's speech to tracy at the end of the story tracy beaker revolving him and his estranged relationship with his father but here we get that mike had a twin in ireland as they both grew up as orphans where the two was quite bullied there and this speaks quite a nicely though with why mike went into the profession he's in today and why he always understood the care kids when some of the care kids wouldn't and his exit with him and fiona reuniting with his brother and mother in Ireland was such a bittersweet exit. Finn McLean is such a lovable character who came into the show as just a generic kid character as believe me there were quite a few to one of the best characters that's still in there. Reuben who plays Finn does have Down syndrome in real life and I love that doesn't stop him from brilliantly acting out in this show. The episode that brings out his character so much stronger is the series 8 finale dream life where Finn undertakes work experience at a hospital which made him contemplate which path he should take his life again i love that there were no b plot and it was just finn's a plot as again one of my gripes with the current shot is how the b plots are usually quite childish and how they contrast from the main mature a plot i responded highly with the story and how finn felt as i fear the future and after school and college and i feel these kind of stories are exactly what the show should do as these are exactly what the first three seasons and trey speaker returns would explore. I loved what Significance this all did with Finn as again it resonated highly with me personally as he finds he isn't wishing for the fun, boring or quiet life but something that gives him passion. Ryan Reeves, he is definitely a dumping ground mean girl, a lot like Electra, Carmen, Rebecca and even Roxy though Ryan carried a burden when he arrived at the dumping ground and would usually go after others in the home like T if they threatened him seeing as T found out about Ryan's past in the previous home and his dislike for birthdays, seeing as he was taken to care only on his fifth birthday. Introduction to Ryan's sister Chloe, who is wheelchair bound after falling from a window when she was two, was quite interesting as the burden was that he always thought what happened with Chloe was his fault, only then realising in another powerful scene in his exit episode that when Ryan and his mum revisit the old house from where the accident happened it finally makes Ryan realise that what happened to Chloe was an accident and the person to blame was Sarah herself leaving Ryan only five years old in charge of Chloe. The fact though that Ryan would have 
previously seen Chloe's guilt for what he thought he had done. It's extremely dark stuff and could completely justify that cold manipulation he was prone to show. Bet Kide is such a complex character that we get from the get-go in a debut story, Go Fish, that is just her story and how she came into care is not only just a unique way of introducing a new character, but is by far the most tragic. Beck is shown to be working at a grand's fishmonger shop. John, who is quite judgmental of Beck, as she has high standards of which she must meet when working around the shop. Beck would befriend a girl called Ray and be in her group as it would later turn out to be quite toxic with Ray's friend Evie constantly bullying Beck and taking advantage of her with Ray though always being there for her and sticking up for her. Only until Beck discovers that Evie had stolen her diary which is how they all found out that Beck purposely took Ray's dog on the one occasion he went missing. Beck is brutally bullied until she puts Evie through the carry treatment covering her in fish guilt although John is not too pleased seeing as Evie's family were her best customers and doesn't take into account her bullying to Beck. Beck's experience runs heavily on her ability to open up and befriend anyone seeing as she feels that she can't trust anyone. We could see that John is quite judgmental of Beck merely being down to a kind of grim reminder of how her daughter and Beck's mum's no longer with him as she was killed in a car accident. We explore Beck's mum and her accident in one of my favourite stories and one of the show's darkest stories yet and a story that I've actually covered on the channel before where Beck confronts her mum's killer. So at the time of me recording this, I just wanted to add this bit in. Uh, the first part to Series 9 had aired and Beck wasn't in it as it was stated numerous times which I think was quite intentionally that Beck had gone to go live with her aunt. Now, Ava Potter has been confirmed for being in the second part of Series 9, which I hope is permanent, as it'd be a shame to be a, a complex character like Beck to just be thrown to the curb, a lot like a Lecter's character. And it's such a shame that I have to get this out by January, but I'll have probably done a video or something on it, that uh, the daughter of Beck's mum's killer is in the DG, uh, and she's such a sweet character and it's just gonna be really interesting seeing Beck and Ruby come together as they were quite it didn't it, Beck kind of held a lot of that anger in because she were kind of playing it all subtly but I'm really really intrigued to see this and I'm actually kind of really invested in the second part of series nine and I haven't really been invested in this show for quite a couple of years now so ex and notice how this is kind of an adult approach exactly CBBC take notes please. In conclusion the spin-off has a lengthy run lengthier than the story of Tracy Beaker who had five and Tracy Beaker Returns who had three. There were characters that I didn't necessarily enjoy throughout this lengthy run. I chose not to talk about the ones that come over from Tracy Beaker Returns like Jodie or Tyler seen as Whilst they are good characters, I want to talk about ones that I found more significance in. They are gripes, again, with this show, mainly being its inconsistency with tone, but again, that's a video for another time. I put this as a little section at the end of the video, as I've actually spoke about this show, or at least the first season, in another video. So I won't entirely go into this one, but all I'll say is that the show is a promising start. Given the restrictions put into place due to the pandemic, it did limit the series to only three episodes, which I don't know if that was always their intention or they had to do that because of the pandemic, which did make the story itself, in my opinion, a little cramped. But I do know that a second season has been confirmed, though when it will film or start production is unconfirmed, or at least from the time of me recording this. Whilst I say people ham on the acting of Emma Davis as Jess Beaker, I did enjoy her character, and I mean, give her a break, it was a debut role. This first series opened up so much, we could see next series with more returning cast, and maybe a plot into Justine and her infertility that was implied by herself, but also why she seems to be quite jealous, as whilst she herself is in a much better financial position than Tracy, she seems to be quite envious of her. Again, if you want to hear my entire thoughts on the series, link will be in the end screen analysis or in the description. Well, this is a really 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 late edition but I just wanted to add this new installment to this video since at the time of recording please stop these quick releases this is the recent installment to the franchise although by the time of uploading 9b will probably be underwearing but what I've got to say about the Beaker Girls to summarize as I have done a full analysis before this video actually so if people are only just seeing this video want to check out that one you can do that but 
What I've got to say is that the Peaky Girls Waltz was a good continuation to the story of version of a mature Tracy Beaker started in my own Tracy Beaker. And whilst the series was beefed up to a five episode commission, there was definitely some flaws that stopped me from enjoying it totally. And whilst it packed a lot of punches, quite a lot of them missed unfortunately. I did find the quality way more consistent than the recent seasons of the dumping ground though but unfortunately it wasn't entirely consistent to be up there with the first two shows in the franchise again if you want to hear my whole entire thoughts on the series link will be in the end screen annotations and in the description thank you all for watching me talk on 20 years of the big franchise that aired all the way again back in january of 2002 but most importantly i do want to thank the past and present cast and crew of the franchise as all of you have impacted several generations that have uh, watched at least one iteration of the show that one of us would have grown up with.